Hey guys, we received another Z97 motherboard for review today and this time it is the Biostar Hi-Fi Z97 WE motherboard. Now, unlike the Gigabyte motherboard we reviewed yesterday, this one's priced at the $124 price point, which is a little bit cheaper. Now, with the unboxing first, we take a look at what's inside the box. It's slightly spartan, which can be expected from a value motherboard. Uh, however, the motherboard is quite secured quite safely and it comes in a static shield and a bit of foam at the end. Now, the actual packaging contains some cables, which if I'm not mistaken are SATA cables. Uh, and there are one, two, three, four SATA cables, which is two more than the one we had in the Gigabyte review. We also have uh, inside the boxing uh, an IO shield. Now, Unlike the previous one, this IO shield is very plain. It's not themed at all and it's just a piece of metal. And second, thirdly, we have the driver CD, which contains all the drivers and the utilities needed to run this motherboard. And lastly, we have the literature of the motherboard, which contains everything in different languages and is also known as the user's manual. Now, there's one more thing that I'm not really sure what it is. It's a pamphlet of some sort and it's... I think it's depicting some sort of audio usage guidance, which does make sense. This is the Hi-Fi variant after all. Now, the motherboard itself, like I mentioned before, is packaged quite securely, and it's themed yellow and black. The RAM slots are color-coded to depict the dual channel, as well as the PCIe 3.0 slots. Now, the this is the LGA 1150 socket you're looking at. It has 1,150 pins, all of which are gold-plated. They're very fragile, be very careful when using them. And also, another thing I noticed that this does not have any sort of safety cover at the top, unlike the Gigabyte variant, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Now, the capacitors and VRMs are what you would expect from any motherboard of good quality, and this one is no exception. I counted 10 VRMs, so we're probably looking at a 10-phase supply to the CPU. Now, the heat sinks of the VRMs follow a very unique aesthetic. They are golden and classy looking, but they are of a slightly light build as compared to other vendors such as Gigabyte and MSI and ASUS. Now, since you are looking at a mid-end value motherboard, once again, that is to be expected. Here is how the VRMs fit in in the overall black and yellow aesthetic of the motherboard. Now, the actual Z97 chipset is hidden beside behind this heatsink, which is held on by white thumb screws. And once again, a very unique looking aesthetic. I haven't really seen a lot of heatsinks following this design. Now, we're looking at two PCI 3.0s, two PCI 2.0s, and two PCI slots. We also have a SATA M2 connector for those who want the super speed or the extra mile in speed while connecting SSDs to the Z97 motherboard. However, there were a few features that I really loved about this particular MOBO. One of them is the Dr. Debug LED that is present on this motherboard and not on the Gigabyte variant that is its most closest price competitor. Now this LED is particularly helpful if your rig crashes or you get a BSOD and you want to find out what's wrong. This LED is what will help you troubleshoot without even doing anything, without going to an elimination process, without doing anything at all. And most of the times, it's completely reliable. Now, another thing about this motherboard is the audio module. This particular module is the ELC892 codec, which Albert is... Uh, far less than the one provided in the Gigabyte Gaming 3 variant. However, you're still looking at about 100 dB of audio power and it has a decent amount of caps to make sure that the audio is quite stable. And this is a pure on hi-fi module. The back end consists of a PS2 port, two USB 2.0s. We also have an HDMI that is 4K and 3D ready. And we have a VGA output, a DVI-D output. And on the other hand, we have two Ethernet connections and four USB 3.0s. And finally, of course, the 7.1 surround output. And finally, the benchmarks of the motherboard. Surprisingly, the board actually outperforms every other mid-end board we had. And that is including the much more expensive Gaming 3 motherboard. 
This is not only in the computational benchmarks, but in the gaming benchmarks as well for Battlefield 4, for Crisis 3, for Skyrim. Nearly every other game we tested performed better on the BioStar than on any other made and board. In fact, it comes just below the high end spectrum. And at $124, this is a must buy. This is WCCF Tech TV. Thanks for watching.